Hey folks, I just want to talk about these mushroom logs. I got a couple questions that I'd love to answer. I did a previous video in which I took actually bags of straw and used dowels in those. That's not exactly the way that most people inoculate bags of straw. Usually the dowel spawn are associated with the mushroom logs. So let's talk about that here now that I've learned a little bit more. As far as selecting a log, we're going to start off by looking for a fresh, very recently living or actively living piece of piece of wood. So it's very healthy, so it doesn't have a ton of fungus inside of it, it's not rotting away, it doesn't have lots of holes and insects inside of it. The idea here is that the healthier wood you're finding, the less likely it is that it's already infested with some other fungus, that it's already got stuff growing in it. Because we are we're hoping that the fungus we are deliberately putting in here is going to dominate. So we're looking for something that's currently very healthy and uh, and immaculate, right? Ready to go. So something that's fresh living it's not already on the ground uh, with stuff growing inside of it. Three to eight inches in diameter, which is seven to 20 centimeters roughly in diameter. And we have lots of international folks watching. Um, so this is good because it's got a little bit of the bark still on it, protecting the inner side, but mostly we've got the inner, the living sweet wood, which is where the fungus is gonna find all the carb carbohydrates that it's gonna use to, uh, to, to inoculate, to spread throughout this guy, mycelium. And then at some point, six to 12 months from now. We'll see some mushrooms fruiting up with any luck. Okay, so what kind of wood are we looking for? I'm using oak, I'm surrounded by oak and it's pretty canonical. It's like a very good selection wherever you are. But if you don't have that or if you're just looking for something else, then any, any hardwood, the harder the wood basically, the more uh, food there is for the fungus to go th grow throughout. So that's what you're looking for. And with respect to what fungus are we talking about? That's shiitake, lion's mane, Oyster, although oyster is pretty flexible. Like I said, we were doing it with straw, and that's one of the ones that they've trained on many different uh, substrates. So oyster is pretty flexible. That's why it's fun to work with. But the uh, shiitake, lion's mane, reishi, maitake, these are the ones that we're gonna tr that you're gonna have the best luck with hardwoods. Okay, so we've now picked and cut probably fresh, ideally our piece of, of hardwood. We're taking it back. We're then gonna use our dowel spawn. I'm not gonna talk about where we got the dowel spawn, usually there's a mycelinated brown rice you've already got ready to go and that's how you inoculate the the uh, the dowels and then you take those dowels once they're all mycelinated throughout. That means you're seeing that the, the pattern here is to take the uh, the fungus and spread it through things, let it grow throughout a substrate. So now that we've got these these dowels that are that are totally it's basically like mushroom seeds ready to go and you drill with a 5 16 bit holes in a diamond pattern around it doesn't have to be anything, I mean, obviously it's a log, right? This doesn't have to be anything perfect. And I want to mention here and in general, like this is a process that plays out in nature all the time. And so when I say a diamond pattern, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're just, it's just one way of saying, we got to sort of try and cover it as much as possible. Not because it needs to be perfect to, su to succeed, but because like we already said, the cleaner the log we start with and the more effectively and concentratedly we populate with our own fungus that we want to be victorious and win and fruit with mushrooms, then the more likely that's the outcome we get versus if we sort of get a, a dying log and spread them out to, uh, too thinly, then maybe there's some competition and it doesn't, A, it doesn't, there's a risk that it doesn't work at all if the other fungus wins out, or B, it just doesn't produce as much. Right? So in terms of maximizing yield, we have some certain preferences and that's what I'm talking about. And the same thing goes when we talk about, and I've added these to the wiki, largely sourcing from a, from a, from a forum that I'll link to below, um, sort of the ideal humidity and temperature conditions for each of these different kinds of fungus. But again, there's tolerance, especially with oyster mushrooms, there's, there's a wide range of tolerances there. And those guidelines or for, mac, uh, for farmers, basically are for fungus farmers who are maximizing their yield. Um, so try it, wherever you are, try it in whatever conditions you have and see how it works. One of these might just work for you. 5 sixteenths in bit, put the dowels in, tap them in. Super, it's super fun and easy. Like uh, uh, it was a really great activity with my four-year-old. Prefer to make the holes too deep instead of too shallow. If there's a, actually an air pocket in there, it can be a good thing. So make sure that, that you are doing it on the deep side. And then again with the wax, some people don't do this. I decided to do it because it was fine to hold a candle and drop hot wax on these little things. Uh, and it seals them up and keeps other stuff out because again, I want to maximize my chances of producing. So I've done four logs of each of these different, um, of reishi, turkey tail, 
and oysters and lion's mane. And the idea is that I can have them fruit once a week and then have four of them so there's a rotation. So each, each month they'll be good to go. And that would be a, a fun way to consistently have some production of mushrooms going on. Now at some point they're going to stop. You'll need new mushrooms in a backlog ready to go a year later. right? You can see how this ramps up a pipeline of mushroom production. But, uh, but this, is, this is the base case with this, with this log here. So I hope this has been helpful. Oh yeah, and then you're gonna, there is some, some minimal care. Like once every two weeks, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get your log wet so that, it's, so that the fungus has this substrate to grow throughout. All right, so I hope that's been helpful. How's it working for you? Let me know. If you're a mushroom grower, what I leave out or uh, what would work better here, I'd love to hear. Isagefarmer at gmail.com. What steps are you taking to take your own family's food security into your own hands? As we enter the grand solar minimum, this is increasingly important, right? We're seeing food and crop uh, failures around the world more and more every day, plus the uptick in seismic and volcanic activities. I don't know uh, how better to underscore the need to grow your own food through methods like this that will work wherever you are, in your car, in your RV, in your closet, in your garage. Uh, there's just no place or setting or reason that you can't be doing something to move forward in terms of producing your own food. So I hope you're starting. Let's do it.